Welcome to Now in Android episode number 65, which highlights Android 13 Beta 4, predictive back gestures, Jetpack Compose, Wear OS, text gradients, large screens, system UI, and more. We are just a few weeks away from the official release of Android 13. Meanwhile, we published the last beta. With the latest fixes and optimizations, Beta 4 gives you everything you need to complete your testing. Take a look at the blog post for what you need to check and test, and watch for information on the official Android 13 launch coming in the weeks ahead. Google Play has been with us for 10 years already. In 2012, the team opened the doors of Google Play. A decade later, more than 2.5 billion people in over 190 countries use Google Play every month to discover apps, games, and digital content. And more than 2 million developers work with us to build our businesses and reach people around the globe. Congratulations to the Google Play team for this huge milestone. If you are learning Android and want to learn Compose at the same time, the Unit 3 of Android Basics with Compose course is available already. Unit 3 covers how to build apps that display a list of data and how to make your apps more beautiful with material design. Talking about Compose, version 1.2 is now stable. This release contains new features like downloadable fonts, lazy grids, and improvements for tablets and Chrome OS with better focus, mouse, and input handling. Read the blog post for more information about the new features and APIs, the bugs fixed, and the updated Compose public roadmap. If you develop for Wear devices, I have good news for you. Compose for Wear OS 1.0 is now stable as well. It makes building apps for Wear OS easier, faster, and more intuitive by following the declarative approach and offering powerful Kotlin syntax. Moving forward, Compose for Wear OS is our recommended approach for building user interfaces for Wear OS apps. Other stable Android X releases this time include Splash Screen, and the Profile Installer. In Release Candidate, you can find App Compact, Emoji 2, Share Target, and the Compose Compiler version 1.3 that brings support to Kotlin version 1.7.10. For more Android X releases, check out the releases page. Okay, let's move on to articles. Roberto Orgiu wrote about how to make your app large screen ready. Give this a read if you want to know how to get started with large screen support and why it is so important. Ataul Munim wrote about Wear OS 3 and the fact that you don't need a physical device to test your Wear apps. Read this article to take a brief look at unique UI surfaces on Wear OS, create a Wear emulator, and explore it from a user's perspective. Chris Ariola wrote about Jetpack Compose Interop using Compose in a Recycle View, which covers what versions of Compose and Recycle View you need to use to get the best performance. As a bonus, you will understand how Interop works under the hood. Alejandra Stamato wrote two blog posts about text coloring in Compose. The first one, Brushing Up on Compose Text Coloring, is about how to work with the Brush API together with TextStyle to achieve a complex text coloring, like giving a gradient to your text, in a very simple way. The second one, Animating Brush Text Coloring in Compose, covers how to animate gradients in your text using the Brush API and Compose animations. Go check them out, I can stop looking at those animations now. Diego Zuluaga and Jason Tang wrote the Prepare Your App to Support Predictive Back Gestures blog post. Predictive Back Gestures is a feature that will be available in future versions of Android. However, to give you more time to adopt it, we made it available in the developer options of Android 13 Beta 4. Read the blog post for details on how to try out the new gesture and support it in your new apps. Spoiler alert! It's straightforward for most applications. 
Apart from blog posts, a new ADV podcast episode was published. In episode 187, System UI, a retrospective, Tor and Chet meet Dan Sandler and Adam Cohen from the System UI team. They dip into a bit of history, talking about where things were at when they joined the team and how things have developed in the many years since. They also talk about how to expose, or not, gestures and features in a UI system. And that's it for this time. You can find all the links to the content I mentioned in the Now in Android episode 65 blog post in Medium. To get notified about future episodes, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the Android Developers YouTube channel. Bye!